In this video, I'm going to be going over how to install the HiveOS uh, Mining Profit Switcher and Auto Exchanger. In a previous video, I went over how to install my Profit Switcher on a HiveOS rig. Now, back then, I was using uh, compiled DLL or compiled EXEs, having you install it, uh, but occasionally the updater wouldn't replace the EXEs. So we kind of revamped the install and update process. So in this video, I'm going to go over that new process. And this will ensure you get seamless updates and nothing breaks within your instance. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to the HiveOS Profit Switcher uh, GitHub page. And within the table of contents of the README, if you click on this HiveOS rig easy install, and you can see we just have to run three commands here. So the first command will actually download the installer and run it. So we're going to copy this. We're going to head over to HiveOS. I have a fresh B-Link rig actually um, that is, is this thing even mining? Yeah, so currently this thing is mining vert hash at 2.3 mega hashes so we're going to there's a couple ways you can do this you can either do run command paste it in here run it will run it or what I like to do is uh, we can either do shell in a box or we can do SSH with putty I'm actually gonna do putty because I prefer that so we're just gonna remote into 192.168.1.36 Accept the SSH fingerprint. We're going to log in with username user, password one. All right, and I'm actually going to, yeah, I'll leave the flight sheet on, that's fine. <clears throat> all right, uh, and then all we need to do is just paste what we copied. And you can see all this is going to do is this is going to grab the installer file and run it. And this may take several minutes to execute. Uh, this is going to install all of the dependencies. Uh, it's also going to download all of the code uh, from GitHub. It's going to compile it. And then it's going to configure the scheduled jobs. So the way this will work is every 15 minutes, it will uh, run the profit switcher and auto exchanger logic. And then uh, periodically it will check for updates if it finds updates it will make a copy of your config file run the update recompile the app and replace it with your backed up config file so one thing to be aware of with the updates is that as new features are added sometimes we add those to the config file so you might want to keep an eye on either the github repository or join the discord where we post periodic updates there that way you know if there's any uh, new features that you might want to take use of with the config file modifications once the install is done we can hop back over to github and we can grab our second command to run which is essentially building our config file we're going to paste that in. We're going to run it with nano. And uh, here at the top, uh, you can kind of ignore all of this. Uh, keep going down past all these assembly bindings. And what you'll see is you'll see a setting for your HiveOS API key. Uh, you can generate this in your HiveOS dashboard. If you're unsure how to do that, check my previous install video. I stepped through how to get the API key and how to get the farm ID as well. And then uh, you'll want to set the coin difference threshold. And essentially what this is, is this is the percentage of variance between coins. So typically I default this to 5%. So essentially if a new coin is more profitable than the current coin you're mining it has to be at least five percent more profitable for it to switch 
Uh, I recommend if you're seeing a lot of constant switching like every 15 minutes, bump this up to maybe 15% or so. Uh, but you can set this to whatever you want. Uh, and then you can ignore the Coindesk API. Uh, just leave that one as is. That's used to uh, look up the value of BTC to run the comparisons against current profitability. And then you have uh, two options here, profit switching enabled and auto exchange enabled. The profit switching, if you wanna do profit switching, turn this on. Uh, if you wanna do auto exchange, turn it on. They can both be on, or you can just run exchange if you want. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to replace all of the workers. So there is a, within this profit switching section, there's a worker section and you have to do um, this add tag and add each worker you want. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna name it and just make sure the name matches your HiveOS name. Uh, you can either enable or disable it. <clears throat> so if at some point in the future you wanna turn off profit switching just for run, one rig, then you can do that. Uh, the type, this is important. So if it is a GP, if it's a HiveOS GPU rig, make sure you do HiveOS GPU rig. If it's a gold shell ASIC, make sure you do gold shell ASIC. Again, join the Discord or follow the GitHub repo because we're constantly adding new types here. Uh, the donation amount, uh, this is basically like the default dev fee of 1%, so that would be the equivalent of mining to basically the dev wallet for 15 minutes out of every day. So mine for 15 minutes, basically every 24 hour period. Uh, you can adjust this to whatever value you want. If you want to turn off the dev fee completely, you can just do 0.00%. Uh, the dev fee does go directly to me, so I definitely do encourage you to leave it on if you're willing to. Uh, helps fund my time on this project. And then the what to mine endpoint. Uh, again, I covered this in a previous video as well, but essentially all you're gonna do is you're gonna head over to what to mine. You're gonna plug in all of your numbers and then you're going to click the, click calculate and then click, uh, make sure you have current profit and current values for these two fields. Make sure your electrical rate is your current electrical rate. And then hit the JSON button at the top. This will generate this JSON payload. Then what you wanna do is you wanna copy this URL and you actually have to encode it. So to do that, I will open up a notepad window just because that's the easiest I find to do it. Paste it in. And then we're gonna do a edit and we're gonna do a replace. We're gonna search for ampersand and we're gonna replace it with ampersand amp semicolon. All this does is this formats it uh, in a way that uh, it is compatible with an XML file, which is what our config file is. And then in the enabled coins, we can configure whichever coins we want to essentially profit switch between. So this is very, um, it's very configurable per rig, right? And uh, so as an example, I have this two gigabyte rig. So all these cards are RX 562 gig cards. And so there's only certain algorithms I can run with these two gig cards. So I've set up flight sheets for each of these, make sure you do that. And then uh, you just set the ticker and the flight sheet. And then if you're gonna use ASICs, uh, it's very similar. So with like the Goldshell Mini Doge Pro, you just set the type to Goldshell ASIC. The, uh, make sure you give it the IP address of your unit, uh, your password if you've changed it from the default. And then on the ASICs, on the what to mine, you're just gonna go to the ASIC tab. Plug in your numbers. Now what I recommend doing is, like if you're doing the Mini Doge Pro, just check the script one. That way it filters out everything else. Hit calculate. 
and then hit JSON. Now with this one, it's a little bit more powerful in that it can also factor in merge coins. So if you see here this line for this ticker, so I'm mining Doge, but I have the merge mine set to LTC. What this means is when it calculates profitability, it's going to calculate the merge coins as well. And then you just set your mining pool, your user, your password, and then it will auto profit switch between those. You can see I also have the CK box and the LB box in here. Those two don't really matter because there's only one coin supported on them. But I like to just keep them active anyways, just to keep an eye on them. Uh, now the HS box one, this one's pretty powerful in that it will auto switch the coins for you as well as the algorithms. So if you're familiar with the HS box, you know it supports um, two variants of Blake 2B. So it supports Sia coin and SC prime as well as handshake. And there's a separate drop down in the menu. You have to switch the algo before you switch the coin because they are different mining algos. This will auto switch that for you. So to change the algo configured and also change the pool information for you in the coin. Uh, that's it for the profit switching. And again, all this is on the readme. So if you hop back over and uh, you look at the table of contents under the profit switching feature, uh, you can read through this. This kind of gives you an idea of how everything works. Uh, there are several mining modes as well. So make sure you read through those uh, because it does support profit-based switching. It also supports coin stacking. And the way coin stacking works is it's going to, instead of switching based on current profit, it will actually switch based on what will net you the most coins. Uh, currently, this would be something like Neoxa, right? Where if you're mining... Let's just say you're mining Ethereum today. At the time of the recording of this video, Ethereum is still active with POW. So with Ethereum, you might get, let's say, 0.003 Ethereum a day with a card. And you might get 1,000 Neoxa, right? It's going to mine Neoxa. It's going to try to kind of build up that coin stack for you. Uh, there are also a couple other options that involve diversification where it would it can profit switch and it can accumulate into your wallet until you hit a certain amount of coins and then it can move on to the next coin you can also do that with coin stacking so if you want to diversify you can leverage this app to do that from a mining perspective um, it also does support nice hash you just have to whenever you do the config file you just set your ticker to nice hash hyphen the algorithm and then you have your nice hash flight sheet. Um, now the auto exchange feature is a little bit different. So right now there are essentially three API supports. So CoinX, which is the recommended one to use. Uh, Trade Ogre, which still works very well. And the TX bit one uses a generic API. So Dove Wallet works, which Dove Wallet I think has rebranded to BTX. Uh, TXBit you can use, and all you need to use these are the API keys, which you can get from your account. Log into your account, go to settings, generate your API keys. All you need to plug into these is the API key, what coin you want it to auto exchange to, right? And then if there's any coins you don't want it to touch. So in this example, I want, I may mine to the exchange. I want it to auto convert everything I mine to BTC, but I want to hold Neoxa. I still feel the price is pretty low for Neoxa. I want to continue to accumulate a large amount of coins. I don't want to just auto exchange them for BTC at the current value. So for those, I'm telling it to exclude it, meaning 
it will continue to keep it in the Neoxa wallet. However, everything else will convert to BTC. In some cases, you might need an intermediate trading currency, and that's where you can set something like USD. Uh, this is a prime example of this is Trade Ogre. Trade Ogre has three trading currencies. They have USDT, BTC, and LTC. Not every coin is on BTC. Some are only on the LTC trading algorithm. So the way this works, it will allow you to trade for LTC, and then from LTC it can trade to BTC. So you can leverage a trading currency field for that. Uh, for trade error and TXBit, make sure you specify the trading fee, or they may not go through because you have to deduct that uh, when it places the buy and sell orders. Uh, CoinX, you don't have to worry about that. It's handled already. <laughs> but that's really it. Um, and then if you ever want to just verify the schedule is set up properly, you can do, I think it's actually on the GitHub as well. If we head back over to that, easy, yep, uh, you can check this file. And here at the bottom, what you'll see is you'll see these two lines. So the first one's saying, let's run the profit switcher um, every 15 minutes. And then the second one's just for the updater to make sure you're running the latest version. So as long as these are in here, those are both going to run on a schedule. Uh, you'll always be running the latest version. Uh, you'll always be, you'll always have access to those latest features. Again, join the Discord. Um, if you're interested in updates or just follow the GitHub repository, whatever you want to do. Uh, if there's any enhancement requests you may have, or if you're running into any issues, please uh, feel free to either create GitHub issues for those or join the Discord. Uh, there is a link to the Discord in the GitHub repository. Uh, that's probably the quickest way to get responses. However, if you open an issue, you'll still get a response. Uh, but that's it for this video. Just wanted to go over the uh, latest install instructions for the Profit Switcher.